Hello fellow leggers, you are joining us once again on a car journey to the theatre. Who would have guessed it? Which, which means it must be time already for volume five. Five? Five now of Anybody Have a Map. This is where we talk about stagey news, stagey things or our opinions on stagey things that happen that we don't get a chance yeah. to talk to you about. I think it's otherwise. stagey discussions yeah. really, isn't it? Because we love your point of view as well. And, and boy, are we still blown away by the amount of comments that we get from you. So thank you. Yeah, it seems to me that you're very passionate about what you think should or shouldn't happen at the theatre. Um, and we're going to spill a bit more tea on that today. But I think we should... As you should be. You should be concerned what happens at the theatre because we make decent money. This, well, I'm just saying. That's true. And also, this is your passion as much as it's our passion. And if you can't be passionate about your passion, then what's left? What's the point in living? Passion. What's the point? You Let's not talk passion about passion. Because it's not one of my favourite song times. It's got to be said. We're going to fall out because it's one of my favourite song times. You don't even know passion. Well, from what I've heard, I know enough of it to know that I'm not bowled over by it. You've not Maybe seen I just it. need to see a good production. I love it. It's anyway, not something that gets done very often. Unfortunately. Maybe there's a reason for that. No, it's not. But no, Lego Simon. Just don't go just there. Just saying. Okay, so we talk about some comments then. Yeah, let's pull oh, some comments out. So in our last Anybody Have a Map, we talked about stunt casting and bootlegs. Yeah. Now, stunt casting seems to be something quite contentious. And we've had some rather amazing comments. And I want to start off with one from John Cullen. Okay. Hi, John. Hi. Thanks. We, you, you comment often, so thank you so much for that. Um, but you've had some very questionable stunt casting, you said, over the years. Um, Will Young in Miss Henderson and Strictly Ballroom, but you thought he was okay in Cabaret. So does that go to show that there's a part out there for everybody? Oh, now this is controversial. What do you think, Will Young? Have you seen him? Was he good? I don't think I've ever seen him. I don't think I've ever seen him either. I guess stunt casting because he's mainly known for his singing. Right? Yeah. I could see him... In fact, I think I did see him in Cabaret doing an extra... Was it uh, uh, Olivier Awards a couple of years ago? And he seemed okay. But it's one number in isolation. You've got to remember he's got to... As that MC character... Yeah. I mean, they've said he was okay in it, but it's got to carry the whole show, really. Well, so. now, this is why I'm disappointed with Strictly Ballroom. Again, I didn't see it, but from what I understand, he was just put in to carry the show for the singing numbers. For the numbers. Which then made it a concert about him instead of Strictly Ballroom, which is an insult because Strictly Ballroom is one of my most favourite, fondest films and of I, all time. I think we can all agree that Will Young can sing. So surely that, I mean, and, but John didn't like him. So if he was only there for the music, then I really question how bad he might have been. Also, one that, do you know what? No offence to the guy, and he gets work, and people must like him. Another one that John has called out is Marty Pello. Oh. I saw Marty Pello in Witches of Eastwick on a UK tour. And I felt like a lot of people around me were having a much better time than I was. And those people, I'm not going to generalise. I am a little bit going to just generalise. <laughs> no, I'm not going to generalise, but I'm but just going to a little bit generalise. they were mainly middle-aged women okay. who literally lost their... When it came, any time he came on stage. In fact, at one point, I thought I was going to have to get the wet floor sign out for the woman next to me because she was gushing. Gushing. But was he any good, Lady no, Simon? No, it was awful. So this is our thing. So, so he comes with a fan awful. base, but it's so when you come with a fan base, it doesn't matter what you do, you're gonna be loved anyway, which just alienates everybody else who isn't a fan of that person. You're kind of thinking, what, what, what am I missing? What do I get? Now there are times where John says it's worked, such as Matt Lucas in Les Mis. Um, I know he's on one of the. Pro 25th shots, it? anniversary 25th? concert, I think, at the O2. Yeah. yeah. And then he went into, and then he went into the Queens. And he's going back into yeah. it in the for the in concert the, version. Yeah, for the concert version. Well, so, there we go. Did you enjoy his performance in the 25th anniversary? I think it's such a hard role because so many people have done it before. I thought it's the comic role, and he's a comic actor, mm -hmm. so it plays Does to it his strength. That he's not a, the strongest of singers to you. I don't think it's an incredible. I think that's the part you can get away with it right and you've got the bit when he goes down into the sewer the harvest moon shines down and from what I remember I think he carried the tune great so I guess yeah that works well and so John agreed with you but John also said that Shane Ritchie was great in everybody's talking about Jamie which 
I saw him in that. And what did you think of thought him? He was brilliant. I mean, the thing is with Shane is again go. he's he's now known for his TV work as a presenter and particularly for his work on EastEnders. But we can't forget this guy trained at a drama school, as far as I know, yeah. and he was a, a performer and entertainer. He's paid his he dues. He was a red coat, I think, yeah, or that's a blue what I remember. coat. One of the holiday yeah. camp coats. He knows to how to engage people. And I just thought he was great. He got an opportunity to show a side of himself that I actually really like. He'll be touring soon with the entertainer in the lead role of that. So, he will be. So it'd be that'll be something to, to watch. Because that's a meaty acting role. As a, I mean, in Jamie, it's not the meatiest of acting roles. But I think the entertainer will gig. I mean, I saw him in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. I would have loved to have seen years that. Ago. I think that's an amazing years, film. Years, years ago. There's been many stage adaptations of that, yeah. and I have never got to see it. It was including with Chris, Christian Slater did yeah. a great version. I never got to see it. I well, got to see it. it was absolutely outstanding when I saw it, and I thought Shane was fantastic. I really did. Okay. Um, something else that we talked about and we got some comments on was bootlegs. Now very opposing views it seems to me that it's a grey area in terms of morality you know um, that's what people tend to tend to think so, and, and opinions sort of wildly varying from they're pointless because they're so badly shot they're grainy true. they're unwatchable quite often true Two, they're fantastic marketing tools for a show because if you do see a grainy version of it, but you get the gist, then you you're going to want to go and see it I properly, don't know right? if that's the case, because that doesn't always entirely work with movies. Like, people watch a dodgy bootleg of a movie, but then they've seen the movie. They put up but, with the dodgy sound, but, like, and you know the story then. Yeah, but a stage isn't experience is a stage experience, isn't it? And there's something to be said about um, audiences and theatres driving their customers to alternative ways of watching film, um, theatre because of how unenjoyable it is when there's no audience etiquette. I mean, have I said enough about that? But I can understand you wanting to see a, sh a theatrical production in the comfort of your own home where you know how to behave. That yep. seems quite appealing. Yeah. To me. Okay, so one well, on one hand it's grainy so it'll drive people to the theatre. Yeah, because they go, um, oh well it seems good. I mean, to, for me, is it is it enough to put people off going and buying a ticket? Because that being said, if you listen to a musical cast recording, you've already heard the music. Why are you going? But that's only one aspect of it, isn't it? That's just the songs. And, the and plus with the musical, you want to learn the songs. You want to sing the songs. Not, not out you loud. Join in the harmony. You bloody well don't. Guys. No, I'm not talking during the show. Oh, I'm talking okay. on your drive to work. Yeah, you want to be fine. wailing away to waitress. That is absolutely. Dear Evan Hansen. Knock yourselves out. Absolutely. Do you know what I mean? That's what you want to do. Um, also, a, another stunt cast in sorry, bouncing back that didn't seem to go down particularly well with everybody was John Partridge in La Cage Fall. Wasn't John's fault. John's very, very talented, but it was almost as if he'd been told to try something out in the rehearsal room, or he just decided to try something out, and no one told him not to. To be specific, this is John Partridge in La Cage of Fall, um, where he played. Is it Alban, or is it the other? What's the character? Jaja. Jaja. Um, and to be, fair, he's a great actor. He's a great vocalist. Mm -hmm. Where the Mancunian accent came from, oh. I have no idea. And it was literally that choice of accent that killed and alienated many an audience member and drew lots of criticism of his performance. It wasn't just the Bad accent, choice. it was the mannerisms that came with that characterisation of know. a cheap drag a queen, which is not what that character is. There's a place for that and that's absolutely fine. But it was end of the pier really tacky drag which I just didn't believe would anyone would want to go and see at a club which was so high end where we were expected to believe the aristocracy were going to see the the Cajels and I wouldn't have gone to see the Cajels if they were talking about like uh, uh, and it was all like oh it was awful oh let's have a fag yeah, yeah that's yeah, what it was like it was yeah. really cheap and I, I hated that no so. class no it's class a shame it's a great show all. Dave Smith has said that they've never understood why official videos of plays and musicals are rarely released after the run. Doesn't seem to make economic sense. No, it Perhaps doesn't. it's due to restrictions by the rights owners. Now we know rights owners can get particularly. I mean, the whole To Kill a money. Mockingbird thing that we spoke about on 
um, on the Tony Awards video that we did and about the rights owners for that being so precious about the staging of some material. Yeah. Also, dead authors, their their rights don't belong, they belong to an entire estate, which I imagine can mean lots of different people having to agree on things. Maybe then it's just an absolute sticky minefield. Come on, sort it out, guys. Yeah. Sort it out, estates. Make it easy for people. There it's a money-making opportunity. opportunity for you. Yeah. One exception I was so excited to get was the DVD of Love Never Dies, Dave goes on to say. There the you Australian go. Australian production. Yes. Set was amazing. They made ch changes to the flow of the story because they in have. the West End it lasted all of 15 minutes, didn't it? It didn't and run the, for very long. And the story was heavily criticised. Yes, whereas uh, that version made sense of it and it was really well shot and they've made money from that. And Dave said he'd much prefer rather to uh, prefer to see a stage version of a piece on film than a cinematic adaptation like they did with Phantom or Les Mis. Yeah, Phantom. I never liked Phantom of the Opera. The film. The film. Yeah, it, it's never done it for me. Um, I've never I can't seen think it. who the lead was. He's done Three Hundred and the other things. I can't remember his name. I, I did see it. I uh, mean, I didn't see it. He so. didn't blow me away. I do away. know who you mean, but I didn't see it. It's yeah. not Gerard Butler, is That's it? That's the one, Gerard, is it Gerard Butler. Butler? He, he Don't didn't watch do films, and in fact, I know that. They did the same with um, Jesus Christ Superstar. Um, again, with Glenn Carter in the lead. Uh, just what? What's the point? Even Cats, to a degree, was highly studio production. I'd much rather they did a live version and just recorded that. Do it live. What's wrong with doing things live? Surely that's much better money as well. Simples. Keep it simple, people. Okay, you're wanting to move on. Well, I was just thinking about conversations I've had with people since that chat, where we asked the question, "What's classed as stunt casting like?" If someone's just the best person for the role and they happen to be famous, then is that stunt casting? I think no. I think they've earned the right to be there, right? Absolutely. So I don't think that is stunt casting. Also, is as it, long as they're qualified, is they it, do the job well, yeah. Is it stunt casting if somebody that's high profile and that's made their name in the world of theatre then gets a leading role in another theatrical production? No, I don't because think that's, we know we can do it. They've yeah, got the skills again. I think that's a sort of tried and tested, and that's how people progress in their career. I mean, Elaine Page was in the ensemble for Hair. And then way before she got the role in Evita, but I wouldn't have considered it stunt casting. So I guess we're saying stunt casting is where the performer's ability is questionable, or not known to be strong in that area ahead of time. Yes, and so they're more putting to place because of their celebrity status and to draw in an audience as opposed to what they'll technically be able to do on stage and bring value to that part. So I guess that's where we're saying stunt casting is, right? Thanks also to some fantastic comments from Ben Vick and Andrew Price. We have read them all. Um, interestingly, um, Ben Vick mentions Chicago, and that is known for its stunt casting. Oh my that's days. almost infamous for it. It's, it survives on it. It does, it does, and it survived yes. on Broadway for so long because there's a different Roxy Velma, Mama, or Billy Flynn every week. I was going to say, and in the West End. The West End is it was because also... Is the score not challenging to sing in Chicago? Is it fairly sort of accessible as a performer? Or can you get away with putting different elements Maybe. of performance in? I mean, when you're good to mama, it's a great number, but I think it's in the cell, it's in how it's performed rather yeah. than how it's sang, right? Is it that the, the, the calibre of performer is more in the ensemble, being fantastic singers, dancers, yeah. uh, entertainers, the leads are just there to carry the story as Maybe. such? Maybe. But that's interesting as well. Maybe why does why do you think Chicago gets away with it? Why is it known for that, and why do we accept yeah, it? Cuba Gooding Jr. was just in the revival at the Phoenix. I didn't hear a single great review about him, but it sold it sold tickets, right? And I suppose it keeps theatres alive. Maybe it keeps that production company in business, which leads on to other things that aren't always going to have Cuba Gooding Jr. as Billy Flynn. Yeah. Who wants to see uh, Paris Hilton in the Apple Tree? Name the musical, guys. Name the musical. Lots of people want to see Paris Hilton in the apple tree. Who? Hey! So it's not the apple tree. It's not the apple tree. Oh, but that so is a quote from something. It's a lyric from a musical. Okay. So Comment below. Comment below. I okay. would see Paris Hilton. I think Paris Hilton's really underrated. That's controversial, isn't it? I think her first album is great. Paris really Hilton. Did. Yeah. She was in um, a, a horror. I'm, I'm sure she it's was something in House, House of, of Wax. Wax. That's it. Have you seen it? I've seen her death scene, but I didn't. I've not watched the whole thing. <laughs> it was actually a really good film bit. for a horror. I really liked it, and I liked what she did. Controversial. She's, I agree with you. She's good. I think she's underrated. Yeah, I thought she did. I the job. would see her in a musical. She's got to be better than Madonna in a play, right? 
controversial or in a Vita. Oh, God. <laughs> in Eurovision. Moving on, moving on. So let's move on to some new topics, I think, today. Okay. What are we talking about? We are going to talk about, and this is because off the back of something that happened to us in one of our most recent theatre visits, we're going to talk about show stops. Oh. So show stops are when the show unexpectedly stops. Bring not in a the scheduled curtain, stop, not, not the sh- interval. Not the interval. <laughs> not the end. That's for another conversation. Yes, but show stops. Okay, so what's happened to us recently? What happened to us, we went to see Rosmus Holm mm. um, and around uh, 20 to 30 minutes in, I would say, a big set change was going to happen. Well, fairly, a fairly big step, set, change, um, set change. And the stage manager rolls up, walks out on stage and says, to Hayley Atwell Hayley get off she's doing <laughs> her best acting out of a window was. she was looking out the she's window like, or wistfully uh, and he comes rocking on so he steals the show and is like Hayley I'm going to have, have to ask you to leave the stage um, Ooh, sassy was ladies too. and gentlemen we normally at this point in the show we would bring a wall in and go ahead with a set change but unfortunately we're having problems bringing the wall in so we are going to hold the show there the actors will pick up where they left off when we've managed to get the scene reset and then the stage manager and one of the stage crew proceeded to manually themselves move the set which I imagine would have been done by the ensemble yeah there was a part of me that was thinking is this is this part of the show? It would have been is a really some, strange bit of the some show. Some clever concept in terms of looking outside and this is actually part of it. And then at some stage one of the actors is gonna come on and start talking to the stage manager. It's gonna be part there was a moment of me that thought, is this is this part of it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But we had a yeah, a good five minute pause. It was probably longer than that. I would say close to ten minutes of watching the stage crew move the set and then the wall finally coming in to a rapturous round of applause when the wall entered. Who knew a wall could get a round of applause? Who knew? Uh, and then we carried on with the show from the next they scene. It can be quite worrying though because if you've got a long show you've got to think for every minute that the show isn't running yeah. that's you leaving the theatre later. Yeah. Plus in the worst case are they going to call the show? They could call it off, I suppose. It'd be really interesting to know if you've ever had a show called off. Not at the Regent Park open air, because imagine that happens all the bloody time. Show stops yeah. for a bit of rain and you all have to go and home. And then what but... happens as a result? Because I know, didn't Ian McKellen do something where the show couldn't happen? Yeah, he, could, he had problems at Lear, didn't they? And he um, just sat and entertained. Because he can. Which is great. An audience with Ian McKellen before they started doing an audience with Ian McKellen. Uh, That would be worth paying for. I wouldn't mind so much. I wouldn't be so... I'd be like, I'd prefer to see that. Thank you. Ask him a question. Who wants to sit through hours worth of Leah? I do want to mention something that wasn't necessarily a show stop, but did put a halt to the show. And that's back to La Cage Fall that we saw at the Oxford New Theatre. I think so. And... They, um, the show was, it was going, it was late, wasn't it? Was it? The it was the very first getting, performance. Very first preview. And yeah, the time, first preview. time was pushing on and we were sort of like, why are we not up? And I think 15 or 20 minutes went past without the curtain going up. And then Bill Kenwright, who was producing that tour, got up on stage and said, ladies and gentlemen, as you may have noticed, there's been a bit of a delay this evening. Our leading man, not John, but the other guy, his name escapes me, was in Greece too. So let let me Zach know something? below. Um, he's actually very sick and has been told not to perform tonight, but he's insisting on getting himself ready to come out. But he didn't perform the show even slightly sickly, so I wonder whether something else was afoot. Really? I'm suspicious. See, I've always been told that you should never make excuses. Yeah, that's... That if a... someone's going on stage, regardless yeah. of how ill they are, if they decide to go on, you go on, and you don't go, oh, he's really sick, but he's going to put, he's going to do it for you. Yeah, give I've him a told... lot of leeway, guys. Give him, yeah. give him a, you know, kind of make a lot of allowances for him. It almost feels like you've been manipulated a little I've bit. I've always been told that in auditions as well. You don't do that on auditions. You don't go in and go, I'm really sorry, guys, I've got a cough, <clears throat> but I'm going to give it my best shot. You you don't do that you go in and you do what you do and you own it they'll work don't it out excuses. if you're sick won't they like if you if you are croaking or coughing they'll go oh he was clearly sick absolutely because you know that's what you do but that was interesting because it wasn't a show stop but it was a show delay yeah which also, meant that we all got out later um, happened in the lovely bones when we just caught that yes. on tour at two two literally two minutes in and i'm for, well fortunately i guess 
I'd argue that the best part about the lovely bones is that. the first two minutes. Yeah. And then once we had the show stopped because the lights weren't working, we got to see uh, that again. again. So we, we got to see that amazing part twice. It was the best bit of the show. But then the rest of the show didn't quite live up to that. No, I mean, so. it was okay, but that was certainly the peak. It peaks early. Do you know another show that peaks early for me? Peaking early shows. Yeah, that's another discussion, but I'm just going to let it slip now. It's just one for I me, seen. Matilda yeah. peaks at show th- at song three. School song in Matilda is my highlight, and I'm like, wow! If it carries on like that, like it builds, like Miracle is great. Um, the second song, which I can't remember now, is great. Is it not naughty? The second song, I can't remember, but that's great. And then school song, maybe it is naughty. And then school song, the way that is staged, the lyrics to that song, the orchestrations, I am like wow blown away and I think it's yeah. got to keep it up once it's up there it's got to keep it up song four for me I just don't I lose it I want to see it again I've not seen Matilda since it opened like it was a long long time ago and I'll quite happily see it again and try to get over that but when I did see it just peaked really early well there's a discussion no one like makers. an early finish which, which, which shows peak too soon which shows peak too soon which sure which shows come prematurely for you or the peak comes prematurely that's just not sounding right it's anyway, not sounding right which are premature which, which are premature. songs come prematurely and it does happen sometimes you like you're kind of wading through the second act and you think oh come on guys this was good up until now yeah which shows do that for you another show which um, we had a show stop on which was very memorable was People Places and Things with oh. Denise Goff when it transferred to the West End boy was Denise Goff good during that I mean she was she's insane like I remember yes. the words the actual words that you said to me when you came out was you felt privileged to have seen the performance like you felt it was a privilege to watch it okay so fellow leggers there's the discussion privileged performances what privileged where, performances do you feel you've been in yeah where have you felt lucky yeah. just really bloody lucky to be in that state situation now for the yeah. show stop a couple of things why it was that. memorable yeah. we had on stage seating front row Denise Goff literally was there. poker in the eye she was there now that's memorable like yeah, that. that's how close we were. Which was incredible. Um, and then uh, there's a very, for very those of you who have on. seen the show, very early on there's a scene where it kind of descends into chaos, doesn't it? You're yes. behind a gauze on stage at first, and she is starting to lose her ability to act, so she's under the influence of drugs and alcohol. And in the show that we saw, she dropped a glass, which was an actual glass which shattered into a million pieces. But we didn't know this. No, we as thought this was we were, part This is sugar glass, and this yeah. is, you know, part of what happened. We're just thinking, wow, this is dynamic, this is engaging. Whoa, yes, I'm really feeling this. But they didn't announce that it was a problem, interestingly no. enough. So the scene carried on, and actually later in the show, there were lots of lots of points where both Denise and the ensemble are barefoot. So it sort and of made sense later on I why we I think Denise stopped. Goff was in barefoot. At that stage, or yeah. very soon after. Yes. Probably very soon because I remember. So we'll get on to we'll get on to what exact intricacies in a second. So what happened was they didn't stop the show, and that scene starts with a transition between her being on stage and her being in therapy, and she. Um, her and the therapy manager are just at opposite ends of the stage aren't they they're on opposite ends of the stage just standing in repose and then the scene starts but they were stood there for a good while and then a woman walked out with a broom yep. you could pick this up um, from what I remember there's just a broom on stage but they kept on going I think this is where Denise Scoff was so good she just she didn't think what the hell or, okay we're coming to a stage shop she stayed in character the stage manager didn't come out and stop the show no. she, they stayed in character sweeping off the broom she was also then handed a pair of shoes yeah and she, she stayed in character still so and she ad-libbed she I seem did. to remember her she said, ad-libbed she said oh, yeah give me, my, give me my effing shoes like yeah. she was still in that moment and I mean that's and, uh, one of the reasons Denise Scoff is so great because she she lives the moment and, and she lived that moment and knew. she was clicking her fingers and going what the F is taking so long like she was sort of getting angry but in character and so we didn't know we no we lived know. through the show stop didn't we like we we they performed the show stop it was absolutely yes insane. and it's only because we knew a member of the cast yeah that speaking afterwards we were like was what, that what happened what that? was that what happened? and that she confirms like actually that's what happened yeah. it's never meant to happen a real major risk with there being glass all over the floor and it was all in bare feet and all in bare feet so we had to do something and Denise just went with it yeah. and I 
bet you 99% of the audience just didn't have a clue. Yeah, absolutely. Because of how Denise Goff carried that. She was, she's just insane. So, insane. So, what are your most memorable show stops? Because if you're a regular theatre goer, you've bound to have had at least one or two, right? I've got to say, so when I was in um, Joe Spring of the Opera at the Cambridge Theatre, we had a night where uh, in the second act, we had these big, huge panes of um, set in the inside of Imagine Jerry Springer Studio. One of the huge pillars just came crashing down, dislodged, detached from the set wall. It's really big and heavy, it came down with a whack. If that had landed on somebody's head, a cast member's head, that, that could have caused them some serious damage. We had to stop the show. And we didn't finish the show either from there. We said oh, really? that's enough. We can't, yeah, we can't carry on. How far into the show would did that happen? I reckon that was probably about 25 minutes from the end. I mean, oh, that's okay. got to suck that as well. That would suck as an If it's five minutes far. from the start, I guess you don't mind so much. Well, you, get, an, you get a refund and you think, oh, wow. Well. <laughs> if it was a who done it, you'd be like, I want to know. who <laughs> Don't stop the show there. I want to know who did it. Imagine if it's Mousetrap. Man, come mousetrap, come the end, the, the show <laughs> stopped, and you never it. know. You have to leave. Do you reckon they would come out and tell you? They'd go, guys, we're going to have to cancel the show, but we know you're going to really be desperate, so this is what happens, guys. <laughs> or do you think they, <laughs> that'd They'd be an interesting one? they just let you guess, wouldn't they? <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. If you've not seen it before, maybe you think that's how it ends. Okay, show of hands. Who thinks it's this one, this one, this one? Yeah, yeah let's we'll go, go with that. that. Okay, go you're home all now. Right. Yeah, you yeah, later. you're all right. See you later. Interesting. Another thing, um, another point I want to talk about, although we've gone on quite a long time about this, is applause points. What's brought this about? Oh, didn't someone mention, I think someone commented about applause points. Mm. Oh, wasn't it about there being too many applause points? Yeah, some Aren't shows having too many? Someone commented, I wish we'd find the comment, but someone commented along the lines of... Why are people applauding after every single song in a musical? Yeah. Why, was, why are people applauding it, after every single song? And they song? were saying that it detracted from the flow of the piece. Which basically. is a really interesting view. And I have been in shows where that has been the case. And I think it's all down to the structure of the show. And if you have a real clever writer and, and a real director. clever director who, who can land and button a number at the right point, I probably agree that you don't have to applause at the end of every song. No, I sometimes don't think you, you do. can segue. I think Les Miserables does this really well. It will segue certain numbers and then hit a crescendo or a button point that really. Then you applaud for what's happened in the lead up and that button. So That's are you saying that in some cases That's that not having an applause point at the end of every number is a badly crafted show? I would argue that yes. Okay. And then sometimes when a number is just pretty rubbish, I felt like this controversial during Only Fools and Horses, the musical, where I thought these song, that song was rubbish. I don't want to applaud that. Yeah, I, I, I think have I gave it. a light little. Give me your hand. Put your hand out for. I gave a little... Like a polite sort of... A barely or, audible, but I went through the motions. Because I'm very passive-aggressive, I, like <laughs> um, I like a slow hand clap. I'm a big fan of the... And I'm a big fan of that. So embarrassing, Lego like Simon, yeah. when you do that. And I'm thinking, just pretend you're not with hand me. Down. Just pretend you're not with me, Don't but I do. do that. I love a slow... Wow, guys. Oh, wow. <laughs> I love that, but I'm just passive aggressive, aren't I? It's part of what yes, makes me so. It's, what, it's part of what makes me so nice. That's one point of view. That's what it is. So yes, we'd love to hear about applause. Your thoughts on applause points? Where has it completely ruined a, the flow of a piece for you, or where have you felt uncomfortable to applaud, or you have felt forced to applaud? That's another one that's just as bad, I think. Or where have you given mid-show standing ovations? That's never happened to me. It has happened, like Simon. Has I it? shall remind you. Well, actually, it wasn't a show; it oh. was a concert. We went to see Jason Robert Brown at the um, on the South Bank. Yeah, the South Bank Centre. Uh, Symphony Hall. Cynthia Revo. Yes. Uh, sang a song from the last five years. Yeah. Uh, literally brought down the house yeah, okay. um, like I'd never heard that song sung in that way I knew Cynthia Reaver was good this was before the colour purple no she, it was after the colour purple but before she went, went over to Broadway yeah that's so what she'd it was. done it here and she'd done I can't sing but she hadn't gone over to Broadway first time I'd seen her sing that and I tell you every single word every single sustained note the power that came out brought down the house 
so, uh, so and the applause went on for a good five to ten minutes yeah. and on our feet and I've yeah. never had that happen before but that's the only time I've ever stood mid-show I've never stood in a like a theatrical production mid-show ever there have been times Even when I wanted to I went to see when I saw Wicked with Adina Menzel I remember people standing when she ran out so no. you know she runs out at the uh, beginning just before yeah, um, yeah. that scene where it's at, she wants at it, yeah. school. And do, do, do. We had an ovation when I saw it, again in Dina Menzel. Uh, when she came out? When she came out. Yeah. I thought, oh, okay. But not much. So I, I imagine the audience, not all the audience knew, Would who, have she knew who she was. Would have knew who she was, But um, putting it together at the other palace, um, some of those numbers were so good, I felt as if... I wanted to stand. They're so well performed. That was Janie D. Some of her yeah, numbers, and David, David Bedella. Some of his numbers. Directed just, by Alistair Knights. Hi, Alistair. Yeah, some really good stuff in there. Mm. So, when have you stood mid-show? I guess. Yeah, that would be interesting to know. I too. almost wanted to during six after Heart of Stone as well. Oh, really? I was this close to, um, and I think it's because that song has such a change in dynamics compared to the three previous songs that were all poppy and hardcore, and then suddenly there's this beautifully written and performed ballad, with in the context of the show was so moving about this this queen who lost her life and the legacy it just really moved me I came that close mm. but I didn't stand but maybe if you had then other people would have maybe well, there were other people that felt like time. you well no, you I'm say sure. it I just I'm, I'm very rarely get off my ass for anything <laughs> to be honest but um yeah, so interesting, some thoughts there for you, uh, fellow Leggers. I want to talk about, I'm not reading anything at the moment, okay. but I want to recommend a book. Okay, please, let's keep our book recommendations I've read going. read in the past. For those of you who have not read Patti Lapone's autobiography, where the bloody hell have you been? Not, you shouldn't read it. In fact, don't read Patti Lapone's autobiography. Why is that, Legacy? Like, I mean, is there a better the way to enjoy it? Audio book, my God. Now, she reads it herself, and the way that she reads it is like I've never heard anybody read their memoirs before. She acts it through, she just acts it. So she's it's like an audio drama. It's hilarious. Um, the way she enunciates, my mother! You've got to, you, if you know, you know. But seriously, guys, go and listen to Patti Lapone's autobiography. Listen to her memoirs. They are insane. We will put a link down below. But my God, if I had one recommendation for you, is put it on in the car and make sure it's a journey that you know because you'll be laughing so much you could easily veer off the road. I yeah. promise. It's amazing. Cool. Absolutely amazing. Other thing I want to talk about? Um, I was West just going to say, West End Live coming up, so hopefully we'll see you there. Um, by the time this goes out, it'll be next weekend. Yeah. Um, so just something Ooh. to be aware of. Yeah. Uh, also, the Tony Award. We were just talking about the Tony Awards, just so if you haven't seen that, as our guide. Uh, really interesting to see what happened there. Yeah. Uh, Hades Town kind of clearing up in terms mm, of musicals. Eight from 14, though, I think. So about half, I right? think that was most that a musical. What other musicals were, were this up This year? There? I don't think any yeah, of the musicals the got a look in, really. Okay, so Hades Town was the one that kind of did, got them all. Did very, very did well. Very well. Did very, well done, very well. Bertie Carvel. Yes, for Ink. James well Graham's done, The piece. Ferryman. Yes, Jez again. Butterworth, amazing. I mean, that's, an, that's a piece I would have. Both of those I would sit through again. And I very rarely revisit a show. But I would yeah. sit through both of those quite happily. Okay. Absolutely. But that's just some of our thoughts. Let us know. We're always interested what you think. Keep you, coming with the discussion yeah, points. I mean, it really does spur us on and give us some great material for these guys. If you keep if you like them, then hit subscribe and keep commenting and we'll make more of them. Because we are the Breaker Legacy. And we'll catch you again soon. Look out for us at West End Live. Bye. Bye.